Hello, welcome back to this uh, series of lectures on uh, numerical optimization. In the last class, we started looking at uh, quasi Newton methods. So, the idea behind quasi Newton methods is very simple. So, uh, we know that in the usual steepest descent method, the direction uh, at the iteration k is given as uh, minus g k, where uh, g k denotes the gradient uh, at the current iteration. Then we also saw that in the Newton iteration, the direction is minus h k inverse g k, where h k is the Hessian matrix at uh, x k and uh, thus the Newton method requires the first order as well as the second order information. And uh, if you look at this computation which needs to be done for Newton method, you will see that it requires uh, inverse of a uh, computation of inverse of a Hessian matrix at every iteration and that computation is computation uh, is very expensive. Uh, it requires order n cube effort if n is the uh, size of uh, uh, n is the size of the Hessian matrix or the Hessian matrix is of the size n by n. Hessian matrix is always a square matrix. So, to overcome this problem, uh, it was proposed to use uh, a method which we are going to call quasi Newton method and the idea of quasi Newton method is that to approximate the Hessian inverse by some matrix which is a positive definite matrix. So, uh, if we can get a good approximation of the Hessian inverse at a given iteration and represent it by a matrix B k and if B k is symmetric and positive definite, then we definitely will get a descent direction. And we also saw that uh, uh, this B k uh, should satisfy certain condition and that is called uh, quasi Newton condition and that says that B k plus 1 gamma k is equal to delta k, where this gamma k is g k plus 1 minus g k and delta k is x k plus 1 minus x k. So, if the matrix B satisfies this condition which is called quasi Newton condition and if it is symmetric and positive definite, then we can uh, use the quasi Newton method. Now, uh, let us see how to get this uh, uh, B k plus 1 from B k. So, B k plus 1 needs to be obtained from B k x k x k plus 1. Uh, g k and g k plus 1 or in other words gamma k and delta k. And today we are going to see some methods which let you uh, define the uh, symmetric positive definite b k plus 1 using b k and the other first order information at x k. So, uh, we saw that this is the quasi Newton condition that we need to satisfy and uh, we also want b k plus 1 to be positive definite. Now, if we take a uh, take a scalar which is represented as gamma k transpose b k plus 1 gamma k, where gamma k is non-zero and if quasi Newton condition is satisfied, then we can write this as gamma k transpose delta k and uh, we have to ensure that this condition is satisfied. So, that this matrix becomes positive definite. Now, how, how do we ensure that this condition is satisfied? We have already seen that uh, if Wolf's condition is satisfied in line search, then we have uh, this expression g k plus 1 transpose d k greater than or equal to c 2 g k transpose d k, where c 2 is uh, positive fraction. In fact, uh, truly speaking, if R mu condition is also satisfied, where and uh, if c 1 is a constant corresponding to R mu condition, then c 2 is in the uh, open interval c 1 to 1. So, here I have just indicated it to be uh, in the open interval 0 to 1 because that is what we need for this purpose. And now, if we use this condition, then we can uh, write that 
gamma k transpose delta k is greater than 0 because uh, we just have to subtract uh, g k transpose d k from both the quantities of uh, both the sides and uh, you know, that will result in gamma k transpose delta k greater than 0. So, if wolf conditions are satisfied in a line search then this is satisfied and therefore, we have p k plus 1 to be positive definite. But <coughs> are there uh, what are the ways to get b k plus 1 and this is the question we started uh, answering in the last class. Uh, so, note that uh, this b k plus 1 is a symmetric matrix. So, it has n into n plus 1 by 2 variables and uh, these are the n equalities that one has to satisfy and moreover b k plus 1 should be positive definite and therefore, all principal minors should be positive that results in n inequalities. So, you have n equations and n inequalities corresponding to positiveness of uh, n principal uh, minors and uh, uh, n, we have n, n, n into n plus 1 by 2 variables. So, we will see that there are lot many variables than the, the number of equations and inequalities. So, many solutions exist. So, let us look at a simple way of uh, updating b k. So, let us choose some alpha which is non-zero. Let u be a n-dimensional vector which is non-zero and uh, suppose we simply add the matrix alpha u u transpose to the matrix b k to get b k plus 1. Now, uh, note that u u transpose is a rank 1 matrix and therefore, this is called a rank 1 correction of b k to get b k plus 1. Uh, u u transpose in addition to being rank 1 is also a symmetric matrix. So, therefore, uh, if b k is symmetric then we have a symmetricity in b k plus 1. Moreover, if alpha is suppose greater than 0 and b k is uh, positive definite then certainly this matrix also will be positive definite. So, what we need is alpha to be greater than 0 and u to be non-zero that will and if b k is symmetric and positive definite then that will guarantee b k plus 1 to be symmetric and positive definite. Now, so this is about the correction, but we also want b k plus 1 to satisfy the quasi Newton condition and that condition if we use b k plus 1 into gamma k is equal to delta k. So, substitute this quantity here in that equation. So, b k plus 1 gamma k delta k will be written in this form and uh, the variables here now are alpha and u because b k is known, gamma k is known and delta k is known. So, how do we get alpha and u? So, suppose we rearrange the terms in this equation and uh, we write this as alpha u transpose gamma k into u is equal to delta k minus b k gamma k. Now, u is a vector, delta k minus b k gamma k is a vector. So, suppose we assume that u is nothing but delta k minus b k gamma k. So, that makes this quantity the multiple the scalar multiple of this scalar multiple of u to be 1. So, which means that alpha u transpose gamma k becomes 1 if we choose u to be delta k minus b k gamma k. So, if we do that then what we get is 1 over alpha is uh, this quantity delta k minus b k gamma k transpose gamma k and if we plug in this value of alpha in this equation and this value of u in this equation then what we get is basically called the symmetric rank 1 update for b k. So, uh, the subscript s r 1 here indicates that it is a symmetric rank 1 update. So, we have b k then alpha is replaced by 1, uh, 1 over delta k minus b k gamma k transpose gamma k. So, it is basically the denominator here and we have u u transpose which is nothing but delta k minus b k gamma k into delta k minus b k gamma k transpose. So, a very simple way of updating b k to b k plus 1 and uh, if alpha is greater than 0 and u is non-zero then we will see that uh, the new matrix that we get p k plus 1 is also symmetric 
and positive definite provided B k is symmetric and positive definite. So, we could start with a, a symmetric positive definite matrix B 0 and use this formula to get B 1, B 2, B 3 and so on. So, one good thing about this uh, update is that uh, B k plus 1 is obtained on using B k delta k and gamma k or in other words B k x k x k plus 1 g k and g k plus 1. So, the information at the current iteration and, and the previous in, uh, iteration is used to update B k to B k plus 1. So, this is a very important point that one needs to remember. Now, let us look at the algorithm. Now, compared to other algorithms that we have studied so far, this uh, quasi Newton algorithm needs a symmetric positive definite matrix B 0 to start with. Now, one can also use uh, identity matrix as B 0. Now, uh, the stopping condition remains the same. So, the direction d k that we get is minus b k into g k. Then the, we do the line search so that the army hove will for army hove western conditions are satisfied and then uh, we move to the new point uh, x k plus 1 using this method and at x k plus 1 we calculate g k plus 1. So, now we have information of x k, g k then x k plus 1 and g k plus 1 we then used all this information along with the uh, knowledge of B k to update B k to B k plus 1. So, we use rank 1 correction to find B k plus 1. The formula for this we have already seen and then the iteration counter is increased and the whole procedure is repeated till some stopping condition is satisfied and finally, we get a stationary point of f x. Now, let us see some examples to see how this method works. So, we will consider a simple quadratic function which is defined here as uh, f x equal to 4 x square plus x 2 square minus 2 x 1 x 2. Now, we first look at the contours of this uh, function. We have already seen this function uh, when we used uh, Newton method to minimize this function or stepization method to minimize this function. So, we know that the minimum of this function exists at this point. Now, uh, on the figure you will see that uh, uh, the quasi Newton method applied to this function traces this path which is shown by the magenta line. So, suppose we start with the point minus 2 minus 2 where both the x and y coordinates are or both x 1 and x 2 are minus 2. Then the first step of quasi Newton algorithm with inexact line search, uh, I am not using exact line search here. So, with inexact line search we come to this point and then from this point we go to this point and then in the third iteration we reach the solution. So, this is the initial point, this is the x 1, this is x 2 and x 3. So, at the end of the third iteration we have reached the solution in this case. Now, let us see uh, some more details about this experiment. So, we know that the minimum of this function occurs at the origin. The uh, function is uh, quadratic. So, the Hessian matrix is constant irrespective of the value of x and uh, you can also see that the Hessian matrix is positive definite. Now, I have also given here the uh, inverse of the Hessian matrix which is uh, shown here. Now, let us look at the iterates obtained using the quasi Newton algorithm with symmetric uh, rank 1 correction. So, suppose we start with the point minus 2 minus 2 and uh, we initialize B k to uh, identity matrix and the norm of the gradient is 
12 at this uh, x k. Now, the first iteration of uh, quasi neutron algorithm with symmetric rack 1 update would take us to uh, the point 0 minus 2 with the corresponding b k matrix updated like this and the, his, uh, the norm of the gradient is 5.65. So, at the end of the second iteration, the uh, algorithm moves to the point 0 0.15, 0 0.15 and we uh, the, get the b k matrix as uh, same as the Hessian inverse and uh, the corresponding norm of the gradient is 0 0.92 and in the third iteration at the end of the third iteration we have reached the point 0 where the norm of the gradient is 0. So, you will see that uh, we started with a identity matrix B0 and in the in the course of the algorithm we reached uh, an iteration where the matrix B k turned out to be same as the matrix H inverse. Now, let us take uh, one more example. So, let us start with uh, a different point. So, this point is uh, 1 0 and this is the path traced by the quasi neutron algorithm with uh, rank 1 correction and uh, using inexact line search. Now, uh, here also the algorithm needs three iterations. The third iteration is difficult to uh, see here in this figure because the second and the third iteration points are very close to each other. So, let us again analyze the path traced by the uh, algorithm to uh, minimize this using symmetric rank 1 update. So, we start with a point 1 0 and the initial matrix B0 as an identity matrix, the norm of the gradient is 8.25. We then move to a point, point 0, 0.05, point 0.23 and this is going to be the matrix BK and then we move to the point minus 0 0.002990 0, 0, and the corresponding BK at the iteration 2 is same as the H inverse corresponding norm of g k is 0 0.024. Now, I have used uh, 0 0.001 as a uh, stopping criteria epsilon in the algorithm. So, that means that norm g k should be less than 0 0.001. So, this is still higher. So, the algorithm will further make a progress and you will see that uh, in the th at the end of the third iteration, we have reached the optimal point which is x star and the corresponding norm of the gradient is 0. Here again you will see that uh, we have got the uh, matrix B k at one stage which is same as the Hessian inverse. So, let us take one more example. Now, let us start with some different initial point which is uh, whose x 1 coordinate is minus 1 and uh, x 2 coordinate is minus 2 and you will see that this algorithm. Uh, the quasi neutron algorithm in this case <coughs> converges to x star in two steps. This is, this is unlike the previous two examples where uh, the quasi neutron algorithm needed three iterations or three steps to reach the solution. In any case, we, uh, we have seen that the algorithm uh, required not more than three steps in this two dimensional uh, case of a quadratic function. So, if we look at uh, the last example, so we started with the point minus 1 minus 2 with the same initial uh, matrix B k to be identity matrix and uh, at the end of first iteration the B k turned out to be like this and uh, at the end of the second iteration we go to the solution where the norm of the gk is 0. So, now let us try to analyze about what is going on in this case when we applied quasi neutron algorithm with symmetric rank 1 update to quadratic function. 
okay so let us consider a problem where we want to minimize half x transpose h x plus c transpose x a general quadratic function where h is a symmetric positive definite matrix and suppose we want to use uh, quasi newton method but before we do that let us look at uh, newton method now as we saw in the case of newton method that if we choose any x not then the newton direction is minus h inverse g not where g not is the gradient of the function at a given point x not and since this is a quadratic function the hessian is always the fixed hessian and uh, does not depend on k so does not depend on the iteration number here so the newton direction is minus h inverse g not and if we use uh, exact line search then what happens is that in the next iteration we get x inverse so starting from any point for a convex quadratic function the newton method gives the solution in one step we have seen this result earlier so we get x1 equal to x star now let us see what happens when uh, we apply quasi newton method with a symmetric rank one collection a uh, correction to solve this problem now at every iteration let us assume that we have some mechanism to get bk plus 1 from bk and bk plus 1 is symmetric and positive definite at every iteration so suppose that is ensured and bk plus 1 is obtained from bk uh, xk xk plus 1 gk and gk plus 1 further uh, we also assume that bk plus 1 satisfies the quasi newton condition which is bk plus 1 gamma k is equal to delta k so all these uh, conditions are satisfied at every iteration k now if you take the gradient of this function at the iteration k that will be hxk plus c and we are going to denote it by gk similarly at the iteration xk plus 1 we have gk plus 1 to be hxk plus 1 plus c now if we subtract the first equation from the second equation what we get is gk plus 1 minus gk to be h into xk plus 1 minus xk and by our definition gk plus 1 minus gk is nothing but gamma k and xk plus 1 minus xk is nothing but delta k so so what we have is gamma k to be equal to h into delta k so there is a interesting relationship that we have got so quasi newton condition says that bk plus 1 gamma k is equal to delta k and gamma k is equal to h delta k now if we use quasi newton condition at every iteration then at zeroth iteration we need b1 that satisfies b1 gamma 0 is equal to delta 0 then at iteration 1 b2 should satisfy b2 gamma 1 equal to delta 1 and so on and finally at the n minus 1 the iteration we have bn which satisfies bn gamma n minus 1 is equal to delta n minus 1 so at each of these iterations the matrix b the, the new matrix b that we get should satisfy these quasi neutron conditions now let us look at this conditions uh, in more detail suppose in addition to this uh, quasi newton conditions uh, that we have seen so far in addition to those conditions at every iterations if we also ensure that uh, so at k is equal to 0 we uh, just have to satisfy the quasi newton condition but uh, at k equal to 1 in addition to this quasi newton condition b2 gamma 1 equal to delta 1 if we also make sure that b2 gamma 0 is equal to delta 0 okay so not only that the matrix b2 satisfies the quasi newton condition but it also satisfies the extra condition which is b2 gamma 0 is equal to delta 0 so for k equal to 2 the quasi newton condition is b3 gamma 2 is equal to delta 2 and if in addition to that if we also satisfy b3 gamma 1 is equal to delta 1 and b3 gamma 0 is equal to delta 0 so in other words 
at every iteration the B matrix if it satisfies uh, B k gamma z is equal to delta z where z goes from 0 to k minus 1. So, if we ensure that it happens then at, at n minus 1 iteration at the end of n minus 1 iterations we have B n gamma n minus 1 is equal to delta n minus 1 and all the other conditions are satisfied up to B n gamma 0 is equal to delta 0. So, uh, the first quantities which are shown here are the quasi Newton conditions and there are suppose some extra things that are also true which are shown here that B n gamma n minus 2 is equal to delta n minus 2 and so on up to B n gamma 0 is equal to delta 0. Now, if this happens then we say that B satisfies hereditary property. So, not only with respect to the current iteration that B k plus 1 gamma k equal to delta k, but we can say that B k plus 1 gamma j is equal to delta j for all j going from 0 to k. So, this property is called hereditary property. Now, if this hereditary property holds, then and in addition to that if suppose in the symmetric rank 1 correction if we make sure that the denominator in the second term. So, so this quantity is nothing but 1 over alpha. So, this quantity is not 0 in the rank 1 correction if you ensure that. So, that means that every update is defined properly without any numerical issues. Then what we have we can write this uh, expression compactly as B n into uh, a matrix whose uh, n columns are gamma n minus 1 up to gamma 0 and that is equal to another matrix whose n columns are delta n minus 1 up to delta 0. So, uh, this entire uh, system of equations has been written compactly in this form. Now, we know that uh, we have already seen that in this problem where uh, the function is quadratic we can write gamma k to be h delta k for every k and therefore, let us re replace each gamma k by h delta k and therefore, what we have is B n into h you can take h common from each of this and what remains in the inside the matrix are the n columns delta n minus 1 to delta 0 and the right hand side remains the same. Now, you will see that uh, this matrix is same as this matrix. Now, if we further make some assumption that delta 0 to delta n minus 1 are linearly independent, then this matrix is a full rank matrix and therefore, it is an invertible matrix. And if you post multiply throughout by inverse of this matrix, then what we get is a identity matrix on the right side and on the left side we will get B n into H because this matrix with its inverse will give us identity matrix. So, therefore, we have B n into H equal to identity matrix and this happens if delta 0 to delta n minus 1 these n vectors are linearly independent and then we have B n into H is equal to identity matrix or in other words B n is nothing but H inverse. So, at the end of n iterations we have the matrix B n to be H inverse, so which is nothing but the inverse of the Hessian. So, remember that we did not make any assumption about B 0. So, we start from any B 0 and uh, if we ensure that the hereditary property holds and delta 0 to delta n minus 1 are linearly independent then at the end of n iterations we have B n to be H inverse. And if at that point if we look at our quasi Newton direction, so quasi Newton direction for the n plus 1th iteration is uh, minus B n into G n and this minus B n into G n is nothing but minus H inverse into G n because we have seen that B n to be H inverse. Now, uh, if you recall this direction is same as the Newton direction. 
So, after n iterations, the directions that, that the direction that uh, we get using quadrant method uh, in this case turned out to be same as the Newton direction. And uh, then uh, it is as good as applying Newton method to the given pro problem. And therefore, what we get is that in the net next iteration, we get x star to be our minimum. So, uh, x n plus 1 will be equal to the actual x star because uh, at, the, at the end of n iterations, we have got a Newton direction and we know that for a convex quadratic problem from starting from any point, the Newton method uh, takes us to the solution in one iteration, exactly one iteration for a quadratic function. So, so we get x n plus 1 to be x star. Therefore, for convex quadratic function, the solution is attained in at most n plus 1 iterations using rank 1 correction for b k. Now, what this requires is that the heredity property holds and uh, these are linearly independent. So, let us postpone the discussion on the linear independence of the vector generated. Uh, let us look at the hereditary property. Now, the hereditary property uh, says that for the symmetric rank 1 correction applied to a quadratic uh, function with positive definite Hessian matrix H, B k gamma j is equal to delta j. So, remember that B k gamma k minus 1 is equal to delta k minus 1 that is true because of the quasi Newton condition. But the hereditary property says that in addition to the quasi Newton condition, B k gamma j equal to delta j for all j going from 0 to even uh, all go, all j is going from 0 to k minus 2 because for k minus 1 it automatically holds because of the quasi Newton condition. So, not only for the case of k minus 1, but all j is from 0 to k minus 2 this condition holds and this is the hereditary property. And let us see how to show that this property holds for a given problem. Now, uh, we have already seen that h delta k is gamma k for this uh, quadratic problem with uh, the Hessian matrix H. Now, if we take k equal to 1 in this case, uh, we have b 1 gamma 0 is equal to delta 0 and that is nothing but the quasi Newton condition. So, we are going to show this uh, hereditary property by principle of induction and uh, for that purpose we have first uh, indicated that for k equal to 1 this property holds. Now, suppose this property holds for some k which is greater than 1, then we show that it holds for k plus 1 also. So, suppose b k gamma j is equal to delta j for all j going from 0 to k minus 1. So, that means this property holds for some k and we now show that it holds for k plus 1. So, that means b k plus 1 gamma j is equal to delta j for all j going from 0 to k. So, let us see how to do that. Now, if you use rank 1 correction and uh, uh, if we use j to be 0 to k minus 1, then what we have is b k plus 1 to be b k plus, this is the u u transpose divided by alpha uh, into alpha. So, uh, 1 over alpha is uh, the quantity in the denominator or alpha is nothing but 1 over this quantity. So, we have already seen this. Now, we have to show that b k plus 1 gamma j is equal to delta j for all j going from 0 to k minus 1 because b k plus 1 gamma k is equal to delta k is true from the quasi Newton condition. So, we have to show that this the right hand side quantity is nothing but delta j for all j going from 0 to k minus 1. So, if you expand this the right side, then let us see what we get. So, we have to rearrange the terms in the right hand side. So, we take b k gamma j out and then uh, this quantity by uh, the denominator is out and then we have the other quantity. So, now we have b k plus 1 gamma j to be this quantity. Now, let us look at uh, this quantity. So, we 
keep the these quantities same. Now, uh, expand this uh, the last term. So, this is delta k transpose gamma j minus gamma k transpose b k gamma j. Remember that b k is a symmetric matrix. So, b k transpose is same as b k. Now, we use uh, the property that we saw earlier and the property is that h delta k is nothing but gamma k for all k. So, let us use this property here. So, uh, gamma j will be replaced by h delta j. So, so, therefore, what we get is delta k transpose h delta j and similarly, uh, we have b k gamma j is equal to delta j and gamma k is nothing but h delta k. So, this becomes delta k transpose h delta j. So, these two quantities are same and therefore, this second term uh, is equal to 0 and therefore, what we get is b k plus 1 gamma j to be equal to b k gamma j for all j going from 0 to k minus 1 and uh, b k gamma j equal to delta j for all j going from 0 to k minus 1 because uh, we have assumed that uh, the hereditary property holds for k. So, this quantity is nothing but delta j. So, therefore, we have shown that b k plus 1 gamma j is equal to delta j for all j going from 0 to k minus 1. Now, the only thing that remains is that what happens when j is equal to k, but uh, we already know that uh, b k plus 1 satisfies quasi Newton condition. So, that means that b k plus 1 gamma k is equal to delta k, this is because of the quasi Newton condition. So, if we combine these two, then what we get is that b k plus 1 gamma j is equal to delta j for all j going from 0 to k and that proves that the hereditary property holds for uh, the update uh, symmetric rank 1 update. So, if we consider the uh, problem to minimize f x where h is a symmetric positive definite matrix and if the rank 1 correction is well defined and uh, delta 0, delta 1 up to delta n minus 1 are linearly independent, then the rank 1 correction method applied to minimize f x terminates in at most n plus 1 iterations with b n to be h inverse. And we saw this in uh, those couple of examples that we considered that the algorithm uh, in those cases, uh, in those two dimensional cases required at the most three iterations and uh, at the end of the second iteration, we saw that b n was actually a h inverse. So, this is a, a good thing about uh, the symmetric rank 1 correction that uh, the hereditary property holds and if these are ensured to be linearly independent, then the algorithm requires at the most n, n plus 1 iterations uh, and not only that, at the end of the n, nth iteration, uh, if the algorithm does require n plus 1 iterations, then at the end of nth iteration, we have b n to be h inverse. So, this is a very simple way of uh, updating uh, the matrix b k to get b k plus 1 and this is what we saw earlier. So, let us see some remarks on this. So, this is a very simple way uh, to use the information gathered uh, during two consecutive iterations, consecutive iterations to update b k. Now, remember that b k plus 1 is positive definite if b k is positive definite. So, uh, throughout this discussion, we have assumed that b k is positive definite. So, let us not worry about that part. Now, how do we make sure that b k plus 1 is positive definite? So, that will be true only when this quantity is greater than 0. And uh, if you look at uh, our analysis, nowhere we ensure that this quantity is greater than 0. So, this is not always guaranteed at every iteration. So, if that is not guaranteed at every iteration, that means that b k plus 1 may not be a positive definite matrix at every iteration and that can be, uh, th th that is not a desired thing, that can result into a problem. And moreover, if the quantity in the denominator becomes close to 0, then uh, the some numerical issues will come up and uh, this matrix can become very, very large matrix because 
this quantity is close to 0. So, so although the symmetric rank 1 correction is a simple method to get b k plus 1 from a symmetric positive definite b k, but then every time b k plus 1 uh, is not positive definite or that positive definiteness of b k plus 1 is not guaranteed. And secondly, the quantity in the denominator can become close to 0 and that can result in numerical difficulties. So, these are some of the drawbacks of uh, the rank 1 correction and uh, we have to look for some alternative method which does not have these drawbacks. So, uh, there were a couple of uh, update methods suggested in the literature and uh, they have received uh, wide acceptance and those methods are David, David and Fletcher Powell method. Uh, in short, it is called DFP method and the second method is called Bryden, Fletcher, Goldfarb and Shano, Shano's method. This is called BFGS method. So, this DFP uh, method and BFGS method, they have become quite popular quasi Newton methods compared to the symmetric rank 1 update. Although symmetric rank 1 update is a very simple and elegant way. And among these two, and the BFGS method has uh, become quite popular because uh, it was found that this method works better than the DFP method. So, Davidian, Fletcher and Powell, these are the inventors of this DFP method and Broyden, Fletcher, Goldfarb and Shano are the inventor, inventors of BFGS method. So, let us first look at uh, the DFP method and then uh, see the connection between the DFP and BFGS method and uh, later on we will see some ways to combine DFP and BFGS methods. So, we have already seen the rank 1 correction and we saw that there are some problems associated with the rank 1 correction and uh, therefore, now let us look at the rank 2 correction. So, given that BK is uh, symmetric and positive different matrix. Let us write b k plus 1 as b k plus alpha u u transpose plus beta v v transpose, where uh, alpha and beta are non-zero scalars and uh, u and v are non-zero vectors. So, we are adding two symmetric rank 1 matrices to b k to get b k plus 1. So, if b k plus 1, b k is symmetric. Uh, this matrix alpha u u transpose is a rank 1 symmetric matrix, uh, a beta v v transpose is a rank 1 symmetric matrix uh, if alpha and beta are not 0 and u and v are not 0. So, naturally the matrix b k plus 1 is going to be symmetric matrix. Now, the question is that how do we choose alpha u beta and v such that if b k is positive definite, b k plus 1 is also positive definite and not only that, the matrix b k plus 1 also should satisfy the quasi Newton condition. So, if we apply quasi Newton condition to the matrix b k plus 1, so b k plus 1 gamma k is equal to delta k. So, substitute the right hand side in this equation and what we get is alpha u transpose gamma k into u plus beta v transpose gamma k into v that is equal to delta minus b k gamma k. So, now we have two vectors delta k and uh, minus b k gamma k on the right side. So, let us equate u to delta k and v to minus b k gamma k. So, then naturally the multipliers of u and v have to be 1 because the multipliers of delta k and minus b k gamma k are 1 here on the right side. So, therefore, these quantities become 1 and this gives us the one of the values of alpha, beta, u and v. So, if we use uh, u to be delta k, v to be minus b k gamma k, let alpha u transpose gamma k to be 1 and beta v transpose gamma k to be 1, then we get 1 over alpha to be delta k transpose gamma k and uh, beta to be minus 1 over gamma k transpose b k gamma k. And therefore, what we have is the 
new update rule corresponding to the rank to correction. So, we have bk and then alpha is nothing but 1 over delta k transpose gamma k and uh, u is nothing but same as delta k. So, del we have delta k delta k transpose here in the numerator and then we have beta to be minus 1 over uh, gamma k transpose bk gamma k. So, that quantity is here and v v transpose. So, v is minus bk gamma k. So, that becomes bk gamma k gamma k transpose bk. So, this is a symmetric matrix, this is a symmetric matrix and if bk is symmetric then certainly this is going to be the symmetric matrix. So, this method of uh, rank to correction is called the DFP method. So, this is uh, named after the inventors of uh, this method Davidin, Davidon, Fletcher and Powell. So, this method will be called DFP method. Now, let us see more about this method. So, we have this formula and the question that we would like to answer is that uh, is the matrix uh, on the left side symmetric positive definite given that this matrix B k is positive definite and uh, the matrix on the left side is obtained using this DFP update rule or DFP method. Now, clearly that uh, if BK is symmetric then uh, this matrix is also uh, and uh, if uh, this matrix is also symmetric and this is also symmetric. So, if BK is symmetric then the addition of symmetric matrices will give us a symmetric matrix. So, that is uh, a clear answer for symmetricity. Now, what about positive definiteness? Is this matrix positive definite provide given that B k is positive definite and that is the question that we would like to answer now. Now, to show that uh, a matrix is positive definite what we have to do is that we have to take a non-zero vector x and show that x transpose uh, B k plus 1 into x is greater than 0 for all x non-zero. Now, let us uh, choose some x which is non-zero then gamma k is also non-zero. So, which means that g k and g k plus 1 are not equal and delta k is also non-zero that means that x k and x k plus 1 are not equal. Now, now if we write x transpose b k plus 1 x, so that will be x transpose b k x. So, I have just brought in the third term uh, as a second term here and the second term becomes a third term in this case just that is just for convenience. So, this quantity on the right side is basically x transpose b k plus 1 x. <coughs> now, now we have b k to be a symmetric matrix. So, we can write b k as b k to the power half into b k to the power half where b k to the power half is a symmetric and positive definite. So, we can write it as a product of two symmetric positive definite matrices. Note that B k is also positive definite. Uh, so, naturally B k plus B k to the power half will be positive definite and B k is symmetric. So, uh, we can always write B k as a so these uh, as a product of these two matrices which are factors of the matrix B k. Now, let us define two new vectors called A and B. A is uh, B k to the power of x and B to be B k to the power half gamma k. So, x transpose B k plus 1 x it can be written as. So, this quantity here becomes A transpose A. Then uh, this quantity becomes A transpose B square and if you take the LCM, LCM is B transpose B and therefore, that A transpose A here gets multiplied by B transpose B and these two quantities uh, become A transpose A into B transpose B minus A transpose B square by B transpose B plus the other quantity uh, remains as it is. Now, what we have to show is that uh, this quantity is greater than 0. Now, first we show that this quantity cannot be negative. 
So, that means that first we show that the matrix B k plus 1 is positive semi definite and later on we show that it is positive definite. Okay. So, now let us look at uh, the first term. Now, if you look at the numerator, you will see that the numer numerator is always greater than or equal to 0 because of the quasi schwartz inequality. This numerator is also greater than or equal to 0. Now, if you look at the definition of B, so B is like this. So, B transpose B is nothing but gamma trans gamma k transpose B k gamma k and uh, if B k is positive definite, then B transpose B is which is nothing but gamma k transpose B k gamma k that will be greater than 0 when gamma k is not equal to 0 and we have already assumed that gamma k is not equal to 0. So, B transpose B is greater than 0 and what we have to do is that we have to show that delta k transpose gamma k is also greater than 0. So, let us see how to do that. So, as I said earlier that the quantity in the numerator is always non-negative because of the cauchy schwarz inequality. Then B transpose B is greater than 0 because B k is a positive definite matrix. Then delta k transpose x is uh, square greater than 0 is greater than or equal to 0. So, now we have to look at delta k transpose gamma k. Now, for that purpose we use the fact that x k plus 1 equal to x k minus alpha k b k g k. Remember that this is same as our formula that x k plus 1 is nothing but x k plus alpha k d k and uh, d k is nothing but minus b k g k. So, so we can write this as uh, delta k which is nothing but x k plus 1 minus x k and that is nothing but minus alpha k b k g k. And uh, we suppose that uh, x k plus 1 is obtained using exact line search. So, if we use exact line search then uh, g k plus 1 transpose delta k is 0. So, so now let us look at this quantity delta k transpose gamma k is nothing but delta k transpose g k plus 1 minus g k. Now, if you have used exact line search then g k plus 1 transpose delta k is 0 and this quantity becomes minus g k transpose delta k and uh, so this should be g k transpose delta k and uh, that is nothing but alpha g k transpose b k g k. Now, alpha k is greater than 0 because of uh, the step size is greater than 0. Now, g k we have assumed that is not 0 and b k is a positive definite matrix. So, g k transpose b k g k is greater than 0 and therefore, what we have is that uh, this quantity on the right hand side cannot be negative because each of these quantities on the in the numerator is non negative, this is also non negative, this is positive and this is positive. So, the right hand side is non negative that means that the matrix B k plus 1 is positive semi definite, but we have to show that B k plus 1 is positive definite. So, let us see how to do that. So, let us again look at this uh, expression and uh, we have to show that B k plus 1 is positive definite. Now, for a moment we assume that B k plus 1 is positive semi definite or not only that we assume that x transpose B k plus 1 x is uh, 0 given that x equal to x not equal to 0. Okay. So, this is what we want to show, but let us assume the, uh, that uh, x transpose b k plus 1 into x is 0, where x is not equal to 0. And uh, note that we have already shown that the quantity in the denominator is greater than 0, uh, the delta k transpose gamma k. Now, if we assume that uh, this quantity is 0 and we have already shown that it, uh, this quantity cannot be negative, each of the terms cannot be negative. So, the only way that this quantity will be 0 is that each of the terms is 0. So, the first term is 0 and second term is 0 or in other words the numerators in both the terms are 0. Now, if suppose the numerator in the first term is 0, so that means that A transpose A into B transpose B is A transpose B square and uh, uh, this in the numerator in the denominator is 0 means that delta k transpose x square is equal to 0. 
then what we have is that if this holds then a has to be a scalar multiple of b and a and b are not 0 and therefore mu is also not 0 and uh, if we recall the definition of x a and b what we can write is that x is equal to mu gamma k and since none of these are 0 mu is not equal to 0. So, x is not equal to 0 because uh, we have assumed it here and we have already assumed that gamma k is not 0. So, which means that mu is not equal to 0. So, the uh, first uh, the numerator in the first quantity is 0 implies that a is a scalar multiple of b and that scalar is not 0. Now, let us look at the second term. Now, delta k transpose x square equal to 0. Uh, since x is uh, nothing but mu gamma k, so we can write this as mu delta k transpose gamma k is equal to 0. Now, we already know that mu is not equal to 0 and uh, that, that means that delta k transpose gamma k equal to 0, but then that contradicts the fact that we have already shown that is delta k transpose gamma k is greater than 0. So, so we get a contradiction and therefore, we cannot have x transpose bk plus 1 x equal to 0 and x not equal to 0. And we have already shown that this bk plus 1 is a positive semi definite matrix. So, so this contradiction also ensures that x transpose bk plus 1 x has to be greater than 0 when x is not equal to 0 and which means that bk plus 1 is a positive definite matrix. So, so what we have shown here is that the DFP update method results in a positive definite bk plus 1. Now, let us look at some examples related to this uh, DFP method and uh, application of DFP method to uh, some problems in the next class. Thank you.